welcome everybody to um, a new show on cable and hopefully some of you saw the first one. It's called Seniors Rock and Sometimes Roll and I'm the host. My name is Lisa Gibbs and I want to say um, a little belated happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out in North Andover in the Merrimack Valley. Woo! I didn't even know our guest here today is a veteran. Um, I know I talked a lot about Bikram Yoga with my last guest, Elaine, and I just wanted to say that Terry at um, Mary Mac Valley Bikram Yoga is giving six months to any veteran who served in Iraq or Afghanistan, six months free yoga. So I just want to make sure anybody out there knows that. She also gives amazing discounts for any veteran who served in any war at any time. So um, our hat's off to all of you, and let's welcome our second guest to my second show and he rocks his name is Lester Rugg hello Lester how are you today I'm good I'm, I'm warming up to the occasion oh cool <laughs> <laughs> that's all I want now so ask away I feel like you're already kind of like a, a semi-celebrity in North Andover as it is oh I'm embarrassed by that thought <laughs> I truly I'm kind of humble in that regard and I really don't think of myself that way. Now you do the senior minutes for the North Andover Journal that airs here on North Andover? We do. In a sense, you know, I'm, I'm an advocate uh, for our local senior center. Yeah. I used to be, uh, you know, a participant in my own little community, uh, which was in California, because mm -hmm. I'm California born. That's right. That's another reason why Lester's here. He's going to chat about how uh, someone who hasn't even been born here or grew up here. He's from California and he's lived in North Andover now for yeah, over five years. Five yeah, years yeah. and how he became assimilated with coming to a new part of the country, a new town, and how welcoming or not welcoming, I'm assuming it was welcoming. Well, I, I had um, my wife's relatives that certainly opened their yeah, arms. They, they really did. Yeah, oh, they really did. That's fabulous. Yeah. Well, family yeah. will welcome you anywhere, hopefully. Yeah, well, they're Lebanese of background. What more can I say? <laughs> <laughs> Great beliefs. Go baklava. <laughs> um, so, anyway, you've been here for almost six years. And the first thing that you would advise someone to do as a senior coming to a new town would be. I, to me, I, I would think, um, you know, um, there are so many seniors that are, are lonely. They, so they're, lonely. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of lost in the fact that they really didn't evaluate this transition of uh, the workplace and retirement. In this instance, um, I I was lucky because I I had some prior experiences in California, right? And I just felt like, okay, I'm going to seek out our local uh, North Andover Senior Center, right? And see what's uh, going on there. See what's going on. I was very fortunate. Um, one of the first things that happened as kind of an icebreaker for me, right? Um, we had a director, um, she's no longer with us, and um, I, it, it, she's gone on to other things. Okay. She, I think she retired to, Cal uh, to Florida. More oh, than likely. for her. But, but anyway, uh, she, um, she asked me to do something uh, kind of special. She said, we can't find anyone uh, to do some interviews. Aww. And um, we have an open house, uh, you know, W would you do it? Right. Well, I was very hesitant about the thought to, to begin with, but in the back of my mind, this shouldn't be too hard because I had some prior experiences right. when, I, when I taught school, right. and that's another story. Uh, I feel like, not to interrupt, but when you have a little bit of experience doing something, it takes the edge off doing something new. It does. You know, it, it really does. In this instance, um, I've always qualified you know, my efforts by... I die a thousand deaths, and uh, you know because I I want to present myself, uh, you know, in, in a light that uh, that's not only acceptable, comfortable, positive, and, yeah, and positive, and uh, these are the things that I was uh, working towards. Uh, the interviews went over pretty well, yep. and I I enjoyed the experience. Now, what did you interview them for? Um, basically, it was uh, the personalities 
of uh, of the community center. Okay. And, uh, and it was the senior community center, or just yeah. regular? No, it was the. It was the, the seniors. Yes, yeah, senior center of North Andover. Right. And. Um, Which is uh, bustling. Well, I hope it is. At any rate, sometimes everyone knew is, who you were. Let me tell you. Yeah. Where's Lester? Where's Lester? Where's Lester? I just saw him. Well. <laughs> <laughs> if you want I, to track him down, that's where I found him. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> well, the you know the other thing I uh, was motivated by, they have um, um, a um, computer room. Yeah. And really uh, nice computer. Room. Yeah, it is, it really is, and the the equipment is very fast. Mm hmm And. Uh, that was another reason that drew me. Liked it. And so I, I always had a couple different directions to, delete, to work Delete, 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 and it happened right away. I guess, <laughs> I guess. At any rate, it, it's been a happy experience. Awesome. Tell me a little bit how you, um, um, you got started with this idea about um, Seniors, Seniors Rock. Well, I've been talking about it like da 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 da. You know, I have a job, I have a family, and I have a husband, and there's very little time. But I keep saying, I want to do a show about seniors. They're so. Every time I see a senior citizen arm somewhere, I feel like it's just a fabulous story walking by. Like everyone has a story, especially seniors, and they're so full of knowledge and wisdom and advice and humor, and experiences. And I'm feeling as I'm aging. Wow, I'm starting to have, you know, all these experiences I can talk to my kids about. I can't imagine what it would be like, you know, being a senior. And I mean, one actually I was saying this yesterday at work to someone cuz they had just watched my show and they they loved it, which was great. And um when it hit me, it was like I would say about 5 years ago, my daughter was about 8 years old and she was um a girl scout and they went to go sing at the Prescott home. Mhm. Mm and I went to watch and they all lined up and they were bringing all the seniors down and some of them were very handicapped in wheelchairs and this one woman came down in a wheelchair and she was dressed to the nines. I mean, she had her best outfit on, her best jewelry, she had a big flower and because I'm in the fashion world, I was like, oh, like she was so excited to come to this event Maybe she was a model. Maybe she was a buyer. Like, who knows what her history was? Right. I wanted yeah. to sit yeah. and just chat with her. Like, she was so excited. Uh -huh. And I was saying to myself, all these people have, have, have lives, had lives, but sometimes I feel like they just get pushed aside. And I just wanted to give seniors who may not have a voice or can't, um, they don't even know how to have a voice. Like, that to give them an opportunity to tell this story. Okay, kind of expand upon it. Yeah, yeah. And, they, and they're just, I mean, they're just awesome. I mean, seniors are just awesome. <laughs> I've I kind of always had a, like an affinity for them. <laughs> well, Knowing that I might be one someday, which I know is a privilege and not, you know, it doesn't always happen to everybody, so we, that's how I'm going to treat it. Yeah. You know, you look at so many of your peers and you think about it, as we grow older, Yeah. Um, some of them to you know pass over to their own reward, and that's a you know that's a fact of life. Right. But how do you cope with it? Exactly. And as you advance in age, there, you know, your sphere diminishes in a sense. Right. And we have uh, uh, there was a comment that was made a while back by one of our associates, John Gilborn, mm -hmm. and he said we have so many seniors that. Uh, you know, they're in their own little apartment. Yes, alone. Uh, alone, and and uh, you know, kind of frustrated in a sense. Um, don't know what to do with their lives. Uh, they don't know how to start again. No, they really don't. And you know, and the, our senior center is is um, a, a direction, a direction, and it's so. Uh, you know, worthwhile because there's so many activities and down there. accepting to, I don't think you have to be right in North Andover to go to the North Andover Senior you Center. You don't. We have, we have people that come from Boxford. We have people that, um, they actually come from Lawrence. Yep. Some come from Methuen. Yep. Um, uh, I'm assuming that every town does have a senior center. I if hope you so. do want to check it out, you know, research that or get your family member to research it because for you, moving here, what would you say 
were the best benefits that came out of going to the senior center like that first day? My, my wife says she's lived here for over 34 years. Mm -hmm. She taught in Methuen. Yeah. And, uh, um, uh, and I would visit her yep. um, um, through this same period of time because we met in Europe. Yes. Which may be another story, but yes. we'll expand a little bit Sounds on it. Sounds fabulous already. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I became a part of their family yes. many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. I met my wife in, um, oh, like um, 19... 64 mm -hmm. so we've had an on an ongoing an off going relationship, relationship. in an you know a in, distant relationship and it's very been, difficult yeah to it have. has been as such she worked for uh, the um, uh, american dependent schools mm -hmm. and um, i worked for a recreation program these were both under the dod yep. the department of defense so we worked for the military. Oh, wow. So you and are you are a veteran, I take it. I am a veteran. That's uh, awesome. Thank you yeah. for your service. <laughs> hey, it, it, it came with the territory, and it's kind of like um, we also served. Yes. And um, uh, I, I was at a particular time that um, was very controversial. Mm -hmm. I, I was uh, in the Korean War. Yeah. And so uh, was my father-in-law. Yeah. yeah. And the... Uh, uh, the next, I, I call it my second tour. Um, I work for the, you know, the the government. Yeah. And um, <laughs> another tour I of duty right there. It was, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I worked in re recreation. Okay. There's a program uh, that I became um, um, very interested in. Uh, it was the, um, the Army Crafts Program, and it encompassed, uh, you know, a number of different aspects about. How can we, you know, um, um, create interesting directions for our, our servicemen, so, yeah, uh, so that they don't become, um, you know, problems on the on the community. Almost and like a creative it, it, it was avenue all of those for things. them to go right. to, whether it's music right. or art. Yeah, it was broken into. Um, 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 they had sports program. Oh, they had um, uh, They had a library program. Uh, they have uh, an auto repair program, mm -hmm. have a photo program as well. All of these things uh, uh, I uh, became a part of, and I was responsible for it in, in those days. That's awesome. It, it, it opened up entirely oh. new avenues. Must it, have been very fulfilling, though, too. Yeah, it, it, it really was. Uh, my wife and I, we look back on that particular time as probably the, the highlights of our lives, right? Because you know, um, you you grow up in a, you, you you school, you graduate, you look uh, to various avenues. I wanted to travel. Well, I couldn't afford to travel. No, I, I know. came I came from a very humble uh, background, Me too. and as my wife did too. We went as to well. Salem to go grocery shopping. Yeah. I was not traveling. <laughs> <'Cause> so <laughs> I had to find a way of being able to go, uh, you know, right. uh, go abroad, and that's that was the way that I did it. And uh, but my you wife, figured it out. Yeah, I guess I did. My wife, <laughs> they, her family, you know, why do you want to go overseas yeah. to teach? What did we do wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I know. What do you mean you're studying fashion, Lisa? Don't you want to just get a job? Like, I wanted a career, you know what I mean? And I wanted to see the world. And, you know, in that generation, they were like, what do you mean? Like they wanted me to stay in the same town, and which which I can understand. Do you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I always tell people if they're not sure what they want to do in life, to put themselves in an environment that interests them. So if you enjoy skiing and you want might want to be a ski instructor, get a job at the local Bradford Ski Hill. Like put yourself in an environment at an early age that might take you to the career that you want. You know what I mean? So. That's kind of what you did, you know. I did more than that, though. When I was, you went above and beyond. <laughs> I did, tr truthfully. <laughs> <laughs> I had to laugh. I had a counselor um, when I was in college. Um, he said, "You know, you may have more than five different paths in life. in in your life and in your career." Totally. A and um, I was an art major. 
You were? Yeah, I was an art major. So some of the oh, things that you fabulous. talk about, I, uh, you know, I, uh, very familiar with. So did you study like art history or base or art art like drawing? I I I taught and and worked with uh, the fundamentals of art. All right, we're back. Had a little glitch there. I guess we did <laughs> uh, somewhere or another, but it all works out yes. because we had an opportunity for a break yep. and I could take a sip of water. Yep, we had I'm a full meal. I'm no. only human. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about, I have to get back to you being an art major because, oh, yeah. because um, was it art history or art? No, it was fundamentals of art. Fundamentals yeah. of art. I, uh, when, I, when I was a boy, uh, I was always interested in drawing. Yep. My mother encouraged me. My father came from... Uh, God love you for your mother encouraging you because I bet you in those day and age they were like, what do you want to draw for? You know, some parents wouldn't have had you do that. Yeah, that was my father. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, was elect he was electrician. Electrician. He yeah. wanted you to have a trade. He did. Yes. Yeah, he did. And not without good reason, oh, that's I know. for sure. I mean, yeah. even now, I feel like everyone needs a trade right. to fall they, back they on. They really uh, need a number of different directions to, uh, to work, uh, work towards. And I think my life has been a, a study in this as well. Yes. But you were asking the question about my, my art background. Yes. Yeah. Now, did you te end up teaching art? Oh. I ended up uh, uh, teaching art and uh, general math in the uh, junior and uh, high school. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, then later I, um, I taught life drawing in an evening division program with one of the junior colleges. Wow. And that was probably the, one of the most fun. stimulating and fun ex uh, uh, aspects there. Well, I got kidded a lot. Well, just seeing the students and like working with the kids is phenomenal, I would think, you know? Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Did they keep you young at heart, I'm sure? Well, they kept me on my toes, <laughs> that's for sure. They kept me standing. Because more often than not, I think I was a little naive, <laughs> and they, they led me they around. They were like, here, yeah, we're drawing you something <laughs> that you need to find out about. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> now, do you have favorite artists? I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I, I truly did. V uh, Vincent van Gogh. Yeah. And uh, was one of, one of my, uh, my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, Cezanne was another. Right. And... Uh, um, they're, um, you know, these these were probably, uh, uh, you know, two of uh, my my favorite, and I was very taken with Mary Cassatt, mm -hmm. and uh, my my wife is an advocate for women. Yes. And so she was pleased with the thought that I might have some direction <laughs> in that. Yeah. Now uh, there is the Peabody Essex Museum. Um, right. Do you? I'm sure you've. We've been there been. and uh, more than once. Quite a few times. In the in Museum, fact. obviously, of Fine Arts yeah. has an exhibit yeah. right now. Yeah. Of someone Manchester, I think, has another one. That's really? It's a. Uh, it's unique. It's small. Yes, but, it's, but that's uh, okay. It's, yeah, it really is. They have. They have some nice things as well. Uh, when we have a chance to travel, uh, a lot of times we, you know, we seek out mm -hmm. uh, artist uh, communities. Yeah, we do. Yeah. And uh, uh, every year, uh, my uh, my wife. Uh, would encourage me to um, attend the Laguna Art Festival. Mm. She was always very taken with this. That's and awesome. in our home, many you know many of our acquisitions they may be prints or something like right. this, but they they were allied to our our experiences. Right. Someone walked into our home and said, "This place is like a museum." <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and I think art is like I don't care if you paid five dollars for the print or the painting or a million if it makes you smile when you walk in the house then it's art to you or it means something to you it does yeah it's it, not yeah. what you know what the name was or if something you did like some some pictures just speak to me like i love a lot of vintage photographs yeah. i uh you know i i wanted to impart this feeling um to my students because i uh I have a very strong feeling about art, art education in yes. the uh, in the schools. Me too. Which unfortunately is put gone. down because of the economy and almost long gone. And, which is sad because and the kids the, love art. They love. Oh, they do. Yeah. They, you know, uh, the first thing that happens certainly in the grades. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Can we draw? Yes. Can we color? Can we can we paint? Yes. You know, I mean, they they. 
uh, in my day, we, you know, we had a, a, a special art teacher that would come in, yep. would come to the classroom. Uh, things change in so many ways. They had a, an yeah. art teacher who couldn't come in uh, for a week a couple of years ago at St. Mike's, and I just happened to walk in uh -huh. to drop my lunch off for my daughter or son, and they're like, oh, will you teach art today to the fourth graders? I'm like, okay. Like, I, you know, I don't have any experience, but I love it. So I said, everybody take out a poster, and everyone take out your markers, and I want everyone to draw a self-portrait. Well, I had more fun teaching that class, and then I made them do a self-portrait of me. And I always wear red lipstick, you know, pretty much. So, and I said, what color should my lips be if I've taught you anything all these years? <laughs> and all the boys are like, red lips? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so uh, that one hour, they were so excited to draw themselves, or how they thought they looked. Yeah. And just seeing what they did afterwards, was priceless. I'm sure that was an exciting experience. We could expand on this in so many ways because, you know, uh, my feelings are that um, art really encompasses all, you know, mm -hmm. all, you know, all the uh, various um, um, aspects of uh, knowledge that we're concerned yes. with. Whether it's history, it's science, history, it's oh my biology, God. it's math, whatever it is. There's a realm of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, knowledge. feelings, knowledge about uh, yep. this that uh, we we seem to be developing culturally barren people. Yes, and that's another topic All in right. itself. Oh, I totally and agree. You must you must find. Uh, you got to bring educator. back the arts. <laughs> you got to find an educator to expand and upon. And I feel this. like everyone, like I told the kids, I'm like, I know some of you don't think that you're an artist, and like you you always think that this one draws better or this one. Like everyone is an artist in my eye, so nobody is exempt from being talented here today. And they were just like, yay. And the art, te art teacher just used to give him like a little bit of glitter and a little bit of hair, and I was like, <sighs> like letting them use as much stuff as they wanted, you know. Oh, I'm sure you were very popular. <laughs> I had a great time. <laughs> and I think they did too. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm sure that. Now, they did you did. have children? No, unfortunately, I didn't. You did not. Yeah, no, I um, um, didn't work it out. Didn't work out. Yeah. And that sometimes happens for yeah. people. Yeah. You know. I I. But I bet you you've you've educated thousands of kids. I, I, I said those were my children. Yes. That's really, really a part of it there. That was just that one aspect of my life. Right. Because I've, you know, I've had, you know, a, a number of other uh, careers as well. Totally. Um, I graduated from Cal State uh, Los Angeles, um, and um, it was a teaching uh, college. Yep. And I got my, you know, I re received a, a BA and yep. uh, and also. Uh, um, my uh, certificate in uh, in teaching, teaching in California, yeah, and um, um, that Ma was an experience in itself. It really was, and I uh, I did that for quite a f quite a few years. And uh, what do you miss most about California? The weather. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say, like now that it's gonna be like twenty oh, degrees I, tonight. Yeah, I know, but you know, the, the thing about New England is, I really have become um, a New Englander. No, enamored. With the Four Seasons. Oh, you the Four Seasons. There's nothing like it. No. But if it yeah. could just be that, all all I'm asking. <laughs> oh, I know. Is that right. it could be November, December, January. Right. Yeah. It's just too long the winter, and I think everyone would enjoy it. You know, it's snowing. It just goes on forever. That we're nuts by the time April comes and we see like 60 degrees, we're all running around half naked because we think it's summer. Oh, I know. You know, like yeah. I'm sure. Coming from California, you must have froze that first year you were here all the time, or just felt like you couldn't get warm enough. Well, in this instance, um, my my experience was colored by um, um, uh, my work with the government, and uh, I was I went to France. You went, I, you traveled, so you got I, used to And I was stationed in in Germany, France oh, and Germany. Cold. And and and, and it was. Uh, cold chilly. In, in Chile, yeah, and especially in uh, you know in uh, in Germany. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I had experience with with snow. 
<laughs> and ice and the rest at an of early it, age yeah, no one's later age, in life yeah so that in a sense uh, allowed some transition in my experiences of visiting right. visiting new england on another note i should also you know uh, because you asked me to tell you a little bit of about the variety of uh, experiences that i've had yes um if you can believe this i, I can was believe very it. very very shy when I, uh, you know, oh. when I was in uh, in college, and I in was high painfully school. shy, Lester. Yeah. So shy too. Do you think people like who are shy, uh, uh, you know, end up like us on TV? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't think so, but at any rate, in this instance, I uh, I I uh, sought out a career in sales, and I worked for, as a, a, a Nabisco salesman. Did you try to? Were you trying to prove something to yourself that you could like get over the shyness, or did you really want to like do sales? Well, I felt I felt that this could improve upon uh, your this, shyness. Yeah, the shyness, it, and it worked in a sense because that's the hottest yeah, job ever, sales. It, yeah, it really, it really is. And I, I, you I did, did well. That. Well, I, I was with them for about five years at any rate. Yeah. Um, Nabisco went through uh, um, some uh, strange experiences um, with, uh, with corporate greed yeah. and, and the struggles thereof. Mm -hmm. um, I, did, I didn't stay, stay with it. I went on to other things. Right. And in my case, um, I went back to school and uh, worked on my master's degree. Wonderful. Because I I felt like I wanted to teach. And how old were you when you did the went back to school for your masters? Just because oh, I feel like yeah. you can go back to school at any age. But I'm I just I think interested. it was like 34 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's awesome. No, I might I might have even been a little uh, a little older than that. Time has a way of just you know just <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I have trouble remembering. Was it 64, 84, I can't 2001? <laughs> but at any rate, uh, it it it's just the nature of growing older. Yes. You know, uh, it's 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 strange that way. And um, um, I I I went back, uh, and I my my goal was to uh, find another career. Right. And that's how I broke into uh, education. And Aren't you I, so glad you did that? I, I had a, a variety of experiences that uh, allowed me to march on from there right. and join the uh, uh, the uh, the Army Crafts Special Services right. program. Right. Uh, and I um, I have to say that that was that was a real experience in itself. And I went on from there. Yes. To another career. <laughs> <laughs> Which was? I, I spent like over 30 years in. Um, um, the um, the retail business. I had a um, a store. Oh, nice! And um, I um, I had um, uh, an experience with decorative arts. Yes. And but the major part of the emphasis was on clock watch and jewelry repair. Really. And um, when I was working on my master's degree, I um, I worked with a gentleman uh, a name of Hudson Reuscher, who was a silversmith. And wow. so, in a way, I, I gained further experience wow. in, in metalwork. Wow. So. <laughs> Which is kind of artsy. And uh, well, I, I mean, I, a watch and a clock is kind of like artwork to me. Well, I, th I think uh, those things as history. Yes. And, uh, and what we were talking about earlier, that art permeates all areas Avenues. of discipline. And uh, this was no exception. But I went on from there. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> Next. Oh, I know. <laughs> Army, Navy, Air Force, oh, Marines. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> uh, what is it when someone says you're a veteran, I stand up and I stand up proudly. Yes. Um, because uh, we also served. I used to say I served in the Corps of Engineers. What mm -hmm. the blazes is the Corps of Engineers? <laughs> well, actually, it was a combat engineer unit there that we we, um, we were with. Yeah. And um, you didn't I, did you didn't see fighting though? No, I didn't. But I uh, I had friends of mine. Oh, totally. That, uh, that did go over, and um, I just recently lost a very dear friend of mm -hmm. mine. Uh, uh, and it's part of you know it's part of life. Yes. It's part of you know growing older. He was my best friend. And, yes. Uh, 
so uh, sorry. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the, you know, these things happen. I but we, know. We always laughed about the fact that he retained his helmet that had a hole in it. Because <laughs> <laughs> he got shot, all right. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it didn't go through the helmet. You no, know, it ringed the inside <gasps> of the helmet. Yeah. Probably got a little uh, concussion with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Well, did. this, you know, I have a great saying. Remember when we chatted um, last week, there was a saying that I was trying to remember about th this person that had written about a book about being, you know, getting old. And this is something that we can all relate to. He said that getting older is a blessing and not everybody gets to do it. No, that's true. It's not a given, it's a privilege. So I think that's how most people should look at it, you know? Yeah, it's true. I have a yeah. friend whose husband is going through, you know, a cancer treatments right now who's very young. It's a blessing to grow old, you know, especially someone who can grow old and still have their health. And this is where seniors rock. Ex exactly. So now it's I'm going to... Good title. <laughs> is it a good title? Oh, I thought I so. I was wondering if I should have a vote saying if anybody should... If anybody doesn't like the, um, the title, then you can um, you know, visit the email or the website and tell me if you want a different title, but I like it. Yeah, I think it would. So think I'm going to ask you my questionnaire. Please do. Are we good on time, Brian? Yep. Okay, cool. So this is kind of a questionnaire I'm going to ask all the people that I interview because I think it's kind of spontaneous and it tells a lot about someone's personality. Um, what is your idea of perfect happiness? Um, a life that is good to lead. I had a professor in college mm -hmm. that expanded upon, you know, uh, his, you know, his philosophy. Yeah. And uh, this is the statement that he, you know, he used. To used. Say. And it kind of, you know, um, resonated with you. Yeah, yeah. It it it, it had a uh, um, uh, a personal um, affinity for me, and yep. I uh, I always have that stamped in the back of my mind. A life that's good to lead. Well, what is a life? A that's life good that's to good to lead. That I you'd think be it's proud a busy, of. It's a busy one. Yes. And, Senior uh, center. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what is your greatest fear? My greatest fear probably is not being accepted by others. Wow. You know, uh, yeah. candidly, I, uh, I know you know, what you I'm mean. very open with uh, this discussion. When you broached the, uh, you know, the subject, would I be interested in doing something yeah. like this? I said, uh, I may die a thousand deaths. Right. But in the interim, I'll be very live. relaxed, and you will feel as if, we are, you know, talking right. to one another, and it's not staged at Honestly, all. And and me, it oh, yeah, not. Honestly and spontaneously. Oh, yeah, it's not staged. <laughs> um, so that you, oh, my God, and I'm sure everyone is so accepting of you. It's like the complete opposite. Well, you, you said something, uh, you know, um, when you were looking for me down at the center. Yeah. Elaborate upon that. Me? Of course. <laughs> What did they say? Well, well, it was here, and I was like, I want to do, I want to interview, um, you know, a gentleman next. I, I did a woman, and I want to do a guy next, and then maybe a couple. And Tiffany was like, oh, my God, I love Lester Rugg. you got to do Lester Rugg. I'm like, just the name, Lester Rugg, sounds like a movie star. So, so I, want, I, I went and dropped off my flyer for this show at the Senior Center, and, I'm, and they said, oh, you'll probably find him there if you go. So there you were. <laughs> you, you did have to look for me. I though. did have to look for you. <laughs> now, did you? I have to. This is this is a total interruption. Have you ever gotten teased for for your name? Uh, it's a fabulous name, but it's not typical. Lester the Pester. Lester the Pester. <laughs> yeah, that was one when I was in grade school. Yeah. That, that was that was one of them. And, and not rug. Nobody teased Ruggles. you. Ruggles. Yeah, yeah Ruggles. Okay. And because uh, there's not a lot of Lester's, let's face it, it's a great name. No, there really isn't. But I, I was on uh, the internet. There's more than one Lester Rugg in this really? the United States. I, I swear to God, <laughs> it can't be. Okay, what do you dislike most about your appearance? Uh, if anything, you don't have to dislike anything. Well, I've, I've always felt, you know. Uh, 
I would I would like to have been um, you know kind of lanky uh -huh. and and I was always a little concerned about my girth. <laughs> See, women, we're not the only ones. <laughs> and, and you know these the, you know these are these are topics I don't even dwell on them, but <laughs> nonetheless I but live they, with they them. They cross our minds. Yeah, you know, they we do. Think about yeah, them. They do. You're, they you're getting honest answers out of that's it. That's right. <laughs> Do you, um, which words or phrases do you most overuse, if any? Like, I swear too much, but I'm not going to say what I say. Well, we all, we all have our moments. That's right. I'm just, I was just trying to think. Um, I know, I know that if we, um, um, reviewed. The tape? The ta a, a tape or something like that, it would it would pop out. Really? Uh, you would you would see certain things yeah. that uh, that I I use continually. Um, maybe the the word is repetitious. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you on that answer. But anyway, out there. Uh, for the viewers concerned, there they can pick them out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm just, I'll have to tell them candidly, I'm not aware of what I spoke That's right. <laughs> or so speak of. Now, I think I could answer this for you after this interview, but what or who is the greatest love of your life? Uh, my wife, of course. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. And that's the story for another time. That's right. She's, uh, at the moment, uh, she's taking part in um, that... Um, that journal program that they're having at, uh, you know, the Stevens, Stevens Memorial, Memorial. Yep. and uh, yeah, she's really caught up in it. That's awesome. Yeah. And she's writing about our experiences and how we met. And that's going to be fabulous yeah, when she's the done. The part that I like, she'll come home and she says, "You know, I I read my efforts," and and they said. We can hardly wait to <laughs> turn in the next page. Oh, so, she has a is. book. So she's she's doing doing um, her best to uh, put down things that um, you know at a certain point memories kind of fade. Right. And uh, but she's doing an excellent job. Oh, that's awesome. I uh, I have to say, uh, you know, the people you know people ask well you know about your wife. Right. And I, I was very, very fortunate to meet a very, very special, special lady. and caring lady. Yeah. And um, um, of course, she says, you know, um, I'm special too. So oh yeah, whatever you're not it half is. bad. <laughs> you know, that's all people want in life. They wanna, they wanna love and they wanna be loved. That's true. So yeah. that's yeah. so important. When and where were you the happiest? When and where were in the I'm the happiest at the moment that I am right yes. now. Yes, you know? you're living for the moment. Yeah, that's true. Which yeah. talent would you most like to have? But it sounds like you have a lot of them. I would like to have had some musical um, experience, you know, playing a, mm -hmm. um, an, an instrument. instrument of some sort mm -hmm. that, that could be, um, um, uh, you know, something, something personal, right. you know, just to... Uh, um, to do on your own. Do on my own. You don't yeah. want to be in concert or anything. Yeah, I was never good at any part <laughs> of this. Um, my, in, in my era and time, they had a music program. Right. And at a very early age, they were trying to encourage me to take up piano. the piano or the violin. Violin. And, um, but I had no. Uh, you know, uh, uh, we qualities. Didn't. I it, it didn't click for me. <laughs> <laughs> what is your current state of mind? Relaxed. <laughs> nice. What do you consider your greatest achievement? Uh, my greatest achievement, more than anything else, I think probably um, was my experiences in education. Awesome. If you were to die and come back as a person or thing, what do you think it would be? A person or a thing. Or what would you like to come back as? Certainly not a mouse. <laughs> 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 and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> what, now, do you have a trait that you most deplore in yourself? And I was telling Elaine, that's a strong word, deplore. Well, in my case, um, procrastination procrastination yeah and I'm, I'm I'm sure for many people you know they um, 
They may not personify this by any means. Right. But in the back of their minds, uh, you know, it's, I think it's a, it's a factor for all of us. Yes. And it's funny because when you don't procrastinate, you feel so good that you like got all those things off of your list oh, of things yeah, to do. I know. And it leads to other things. It does. And yeah. it leads to like just all this fabulous stuff. What is your most treasured possession? My most treasured possession? Uh, I, I should smile at and say, my wife, of course. <laughs> <laughs> my wife but for all these a, questions. She, but she's not a possession. Right. She really isn't. My wife is a woman's advocate, and she's made me very, very aware of, you know, um, some women's of the roles issues. that have been and issues that have uh, dominated our society mm -hmm. and our history. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope that she has an opportunity to um, uh, join you in an interview. Right. And um, you could expand upon this because. Um, she and a good friend developed a, uh, a program mm -hmm. uh, to teach uh, this emphasis on women's role and women's history mm -hmm. and women's empowerment. And good it, for her. And I, uh, I would love to have her expand upon it because she, they, uh, they did a terrific, terrific job. job. They did. Well, th I want to thank Lester so much for coming in today and talking with me. And it sounds like basically he's going to get the boot and I'm going to call his wife to come in. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thanks for being so honest. And it was such a pleasure. I feel like we definitely have to do this again because you're a wealth of knowledge and you're so interesting. And this is what the show is going to be all about. So mm -hmm. seniors rock, everybody, and Lester Rugg rocks which is kind of a tongue twister. <laughs> but um, if you have any questions or concerns or someone you'd like to feature on this show, please email me at seniorsrockandroll at gmail.com. Again, it's Lisa Gibbs, and thanks a lot for watching.